Now in physics, there are many dimensions that we measure that are vector quantities. That is, they have both a magnitude and a direction. Now there are many, but a few that come to mind, acceleration, force, momentum, magnetic field strength, and so forth. Now in high school, we generally talk about vectors in two dimensions, and we talk about the X direction and the Y direction. However, to understand vectors better, we need a better notation, particularly if we're going to be looking in three dimensions. And this is where unit vectors come into play. Now, unit vectors are simply vectors that have a magnitude of one, and we usually we draw them either in the X and Y, and if in three dimensions, in the Z direction, and we give them particular labels. Now, in the case of the X direction, my unit vector here would be I, and then what we do is the little circumflex at the top, and what we say is I hat. So we have a unit vector I there along the X axis. Similarly speaking, if I have a unit vector for the Y direction, I'm gonna call this J hat, and that's our single unit vector in the Y direction. And of course, if I have a three-dimensional space, in other words, I have an axis going in and out of the board, I'll have a unit vector that is called K hat. In other words, we have, in this case, a unit vector going along the Z axis. So how do we use that notation in drawing a two-dimensional vector? So let's say I have a vector that is three units in the X direction and four units in the Y direction. So let's say this particular point right there, three, four. And then of course my vector would be that particular arrow. And so what we say is that this vector is three unit vectors to this direction and four units in that direction. So if this is my vector A, our vector A, and we put a little arrow on the top to make sure we are talking about the vector, is equal to the X component. So we say A X I hat plus a Y J hat. In other words, this is our X component, and that of course is equal to three. And then of course the other component is equal to four. So that is the way we would draw that vector in terms of the unit vectors, in this case, in two dimensions. Equally, if I have a, a vector also in three dimensions, then I have some A Z component with the K hat right next to it. Now it's pretty clear here then if we wanted to work out the actual magnitude of A, in other words what we say is A modulus over on this side, what we then get up of course is AX squared plus BX squared and then the square root of that. In other words it's Pythagoras and so we just simply have 3 squared plus 4 squared and of course that is equal to 5 if we square root it. The inverse tan of Y component over my X component, that's of course equal to 4 over 3, and we're going to get approximately 53 degrees. So what if I now have three dimensions? How would I draw a vector in three dimensions? Well, let's say my vector A, and we again make sure we got the notations right, well that of course is the X component with I hat plus the Y component J hat plus the Z component K hat. And so in this case, I might have a vector that is three unit vectors, I hat minus three units in terms of J hat plus two units K hat. In this case, I would draw a vector that is three positive units this way. I'd have three downwards in this case, and then I would draw it, of course, out coming here to do the positive two direction for along the Z axis right there. I'm not gonna draw it, it's always problematic drawing on a two dimensional space, a three dimensional vector. But you can see that's how we would then write the notation. And again, simply to work out the magnitude, the magnitude of that vector is simply equal to the square root of three squared plus negative three squared plus two squared, which is going to be equal to 9 plus 9 plus 4, and gives us a total of 22. So what we have is the square root of 22 in this case. Now, what about angles? Well, there are in fact multiple angles here because we're in three-dimensional space. And so you need to work out the angle of the vector between each of the axes, the X, the Y, and the Z. And again, you would use trigonometry to solve for that. Finally, how do we then add vectors? Well, that's very simple. You just add the unit vectors for each of the components. In other words, the I hat, J 
J hat and K hat. So obviously if I have a vector B and that is equal to let's say negative 2 I hat plus 3 J hat minus 1 K hat then A plus B is going to simply equal to I hat plus negative 3 plus 3 is no J hat in this case. We have 2 minus 1 and we just get K hat and that is my final result for my A plus B. Next we're going to be looking at what we do in multiplying vectors when they're in unit vector notation. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and put a comment down below if this is helpful for you. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.